In this video, we're going to focus on adding a dynamic background color in a tree map chart. So, so far we have this here, and you can see here the hoover, but we want to focus on that. What we want to focus is on, on the background color. You can see here, this one is supposed to be far more darker compared to this one here. That would make sense. It should be lighter, and the bigger it becomes, the darker it becomes as well. So let's start to explore how we can do this. So far we have here the data, and you will notice as well, the data here, whatever this data is, is basically, or this should be even converted, let's say that we have to name this properly to tree, the refresh here, so that's the proper term for it, by the way. But what you will notice here is that it automatically orders its value. This is 12 and 12. It doesn't matter the order here, it will put them in the right order from big or from large to small. So now let's start to work on the background color here. So for the background color, I'm going to remove this here all, and we're going to create a functionality in here, or basically a callback function. And what I want to do here is, I want to say, in this, we're going to grab here the CTX, which is basically the context, and then we're going to say here a callback functionality, that's why you have the arrow. We will say a color from raw, and what is this, what does this mean? Basically, this is a function, we can give it any name we want, but this is the color from the raw data, and I'm going to show you exactly why it is called raw, because it is the raw data. So we're going to make this function, let's say a function, copy this, and put it in here. So once we did that, we're going to grab here the parameter, which was here, this argument, we put it here as a parameter, which is exactly the same context. So now we have this. What I want to do first is I want to say here console log and just show you what is CTX. So if I save this now, refresh, open up developer tab, uh, tab, and then we have here all the objects. You will see here there's a lot of information here, and you notice know the color became black, and the reason why is because we didn't assign any more a color. It's supposed to get a color from the function, but the function has no color as a return value, so it becomes a default color, which is black. But this is very important. I'm going to show you two items here that's very important. You can see here the type equals data set here, type equals data set here, and the mode is undefined. After the second load, what will happen is we're getting here the raw data and the type equals data. What happens here? Well, basically, it loads the data sets first, twice, and then because, because of the animation, it loads that, and it cannot recognize all of the raw data. So you can see your color from raw refers to basically the color from the raw object here with all these values. And I'm going to explain them in a bit what they all mean. So to get this, or before we can do anything, we want to get, for example, the raw, we have to first surpass these two loads here. Because what will happen if we don't do this, we get an error. So for example, I want to grab the CTX and raw.a. Let's do that one. So we say CTX and raw.a, save, refresh, and automatically it triggers an error and stops the entire functionality. So we don't want this. So that will mean that we need to first let one, uh, one thing load before it recognizes the next one. So if I save this and refresh, you can see here how can we make a condition on it. We're going to say here type equals data, but if I go up here, type will be, no, let's click here up, type will be data set. So what I'm going to do here now is an if statement. And this if statement will say if, CTX dot type is not equal to data. In this case, what I want to do is I want to return a color, and the color we're going to return is transparent. So this, make sure that this is a, st a string value, save and refresh. Now we have something working. Of course, it doesn't see it immediately, or what happens is it becomes transparent first, but after the second load, after the second load, it will get the other color. And the other colors, of course, it's not defined, so it becomes black again. So because it loads so fast, we don't notice this. So now we can start to work on the real part. Because now if I do here afterwards, let's say here, cut so lock, let's copy that, and then we're going to say dot. We're going to say here CTX raw dot, for example, V, save that, refresh. We should be able to grab here now the value, which is the V. The V stands for value, so it is now time to explain all these items so you are not getting confused. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, refresh, and there we are. 
let's go in here click on this so we get all of these values here and let me just copy all of this and go to break them down so we have understanding what they mean and why they are here so you can see here it is all of them so the first one here well i'll skip this one for now and what i'm going to do is let's get the these two these are the most uh, logical ones and it's starting point. so basically x 0 and y 32 what does that mean it looks here at the starting point of our pixels an so x and y coordinate so x 0 would be probably exactly in the canvas as you can see here 0 on left side and y 32 because we're going 32 pixels down so this is basically the starting point uh, starting point on horizontal level horizontal level and the y is the starting point on vertical vertical level all right so once we have this the next one would be the height and width so i'm going to cut out this one here put that in there and we have, well let's say width and height the width is width in pixels so from zero to 177 would indicate from here to there and then the height is i guess the same thing height in pixels would indicate we can even double check that from here all the way down and how can we confirm this because you can see here let me double check here well, look at the tooltip at the very top you can see 340 is considered the height that's the height and the width is 681 so if we calculate height minus or plus the pixels of 32 we also get 340 pixels so that means this is all correct all right so now we have that one and then we have eventually uh well the a the a in essence is the amount of pixels which is the width multiplied by height that's it so these two values multiplied by together will give you this and then finally we have the s and the v although the s stands for the total sum so most likely there is still something where we can add up more items there's some more advanced features for that but it's also the value itself so this this value tend to be identical most of the time because you can see here let's go back here hover over it you can see three three map chart sales value number 18 and that's basically 18 is this tool here all right so now you have understanding of this so what we're going to do now is we're going to grab this or let's see which value can we use well i guess in this case we can use here the uh, the v value because that's the comparison of so what i want to do here is i want to say here constant let's select your value equals ctx dot raw dot v remember that is the reference to this one here because all the raw values so now what i want to do here is the following i'm going to just use a calculation we can say here let alpha value because I want to have the alpha value calculated because we need to eventually figure out how can we dynamically make this lighter or darker depending on the size of our square or the shape of it or of the value value based so we say alpha will be equal to and then we're going to use here a formula we say one plus and then we're going to say math dot log which creates a formula and then we grab here value which is this one here or the raw item once you do that divide by five then we'll get eventually a value here so if i do here now console law i'm going to say here alpha save that refresh go here then we should have here one this and then here you get all of these items here so it starts to look nice so then what i want to do here is starting to put in a return value so we're going to say return value and the return value we're going to use template literals we're going to say rgba or basically just all of this except for one thing because it's template literals i'm using back ticks so i'm going to copy everything between here put in here this is back ticks by the way that's why template literals meaning uh, on your skateboard or at least or on your keyboard on your mac just below the escape button you have the uh, back ticks and what i'm going to do here is because it's time little we can say a dollar sign to make a value i'm going to say alpha and if i save this we should have now all different values but i realize we have always one so maybe we can 
change this value a little bit in a more proper way, or maybe from reducing this. Let's see how that works. There we are. That looks way better. So sorry, the plus one is of course doesn't make any sense here. We have to make sure it is removing the one. So what you get then here now is a value dependent on the item. So if I would change the value here to 25, save, refresh, you can see it becomes more darker nicely. So that is basically how you can put in here a color. 